if you bring five, ten thousand people and settle them near a forest without really telling them how to use this, in one, two, three years' time, that forest is gone. What we're looking at here is the result of six years of total madness. I mean, look at all this. Uh, at one time, I believe that this place was very thickly forested, but it's all gone. Well, for a good reason, because this place uh, was home to over 40 to 50,000 uh, displaced persons. We are trying best as we can to perhaps come up with the, 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 the most practical way of reforesting this land. But it's not going to be easy because I understand that this land belongs to a community or some people and those people are not sure whether they should be allowing strangers to come and plant trees on their land. So we have to, to, to explain to these people that we're all working together in partnership for the common good. Five years was the last time I came here to actually, because we handed over these places in 2005, 2004, 2005. We were done with this place in 2004. All right. EFA got involved with uh, the environmental management in refugee operations in 1998, actually in Liberia. It started as an experiment, actually. We got a small grant, our first ever grant, actually, from the IUCN Netherlands, uh, at the time, Tropical Rainforest Program. And the idea was to choose five different uh, settlements, a refugee settlement, uh, a displaced, uh, internally displaced, a returnee settlement, a, a, a population that hadn't moved during the war, and a school environment. In the process of doing these experiments, which mainly involved uh, working with these communities to establish tree nurseries, to do some environmental awareness education, and to see to what extent these people embraced the, 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 the culture of tree planting. The message that we gave to them was, A, you're planting trees as a way of saying thank you to the people of Liberia for giving you the land. Secondly, you're planting trees because it will give you shelter, because this was a camp where there was nothing in sight except the shelters themselves and you are planting trees because it will give you hopefully some firewood and, and, and some other materials for food and for your animals too. In eight months time even UNHCR camp management teams in the camp began to see this was as a good thing and then they asked us if we could develop a proposal to replicate this in all of the camps. That's how we got into this process. And then within two years of uh, working in all of the refugee camps in Liberia, uh, when things got better in Sierra Leone, we were asked to come and replicate the same thing here in Sierra Leone. And within three, four years, we were UNHCR's uh, environment partner operating in refugee situations in both Liberia and Sierra Leone, and latterly also in Guinea. In Sierra Leone, we had eight refugee camps. And in fact, as late as 2007, we had a contract from UNHCR to rehabilitate uh, 34 IDP camps. That's internally displaced persons. That's after these camps being used on and off throughout the conflict for about 14, 15 years. And hosting more than 350,000 to half a million people at different times during that period. I'm Emmanuel Thomas from Jerome Refugee Camp. The benefit of the, tree, the trees that we planted, yeah. uh, it can give shade. For example, we are now on, 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 under the shade of the trees that we planted. That's one of the benefits. And also, um, it helps the soil of the land that has already been destroyed. My name is Patrick Jusu, a legion 
between the host and the refugee. Before, before they came in, when these boats were being built, during the rainy season or when there is disaster, when we say the wind blows up this way, in the morning when we come, we see four or five boats have already fell down because there was no tree to stop uh, 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 the wind. I'm Fala Givani. Sometimes it will some dry, we cut them down, we burn them. I want to thank God for EFA and I want them to continue this good work wherever they will see the need arise. What we, we, what, what we did was very, very simple. One, we had to raise awareness among the refugees and host populations about the impact of conflict on the environment and the extent to which these two groups, the host populations and the refugee populations, can work together to minimize those impacts. <laughs> Within that, it was about building capacities for future management of these sites. So we didn't just come and plant trees, we worked with the people, we trained them how to nurse these trees, we worked with the school children, we brought in a lot of different uh, materials, and we conducted environmental awareness programs throughout the process. Also, we taught them about uh, conserving energy. We taught them things like how to make uh, ecological stoves. These are uh, ones based, uh, clay-based stoves, which cut down on fuel wood use by about 50%. So these were the basic things that we, were, we did with the, we, 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 in the refugee camp. I would say it's a lesson learned for the other partners. We actually uh, came in from the beginning knowing that it was a mistake to have started establishment of camps without even as much as doing an environmental impact assessment. However, uh, as soon as it was possible to, uh, to, to start to look at influencing uh, institutions such as UNHCR to begin to, to integrate uh, environmental considerations in, uh, in, in the planning of establishing camps. We try to do that. These trees were planted in 2001-2002. Yeah. So um, among the first set of plantings that we did the, the most cost-effective way of rehabilitating a camp is to integrate uh, environmental considerations in the planning of establishing the camps, in the activities of all the camp management institutions from day one. It is our expectation that in future this becomes the, the norm, not the exception. <laughs>